Okay, for this video, I'm going to um, show you how to do Lab 3, but implement the Publisher database in Microsoft Access. So, uh, to do that, first of all, we need to get into Microsoft Access, and this is how I have to do it. MS Access 2013 pops up. Should pop up anyway. Oh, there it is. Okay. And uh, up comes a blank desktop database. And you need to go to database tools. And okay, and then the first thing you need to do is you need to create the tables. So uh, here we've got a table right here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to design view. And there's several tables you have to create based on the instructions. One is a customer's table. And I'm going to change this to customer ID. Now, I'm going to deviate a bit from the lab instructions. I believe that what I'm showing you is superior. Uh, they have you using text for all a lot of your columns, and um, I don't agree with that. You should use an auto number column, in my view, because that will automatically increment every time a user enters a new customer. It'll give it a unique number. The user doesn't have to think about you know, what uh, primary key to give each customer, and it will always be unique. So that's the way I'm going to do it here. When you add a primary key, it's auto number. You look here, you see that it's um, it's not really a data type. It's it's a functionality associated with the long integer data type. So customer ID, any ID, whether foreign key or a primary key ID, will be a long integer. And you've got to make sure that you always set them to be long integers. So I'm going to go into that in a little more detail later on. And then you put in all the other columns and I'm not going to do them all but just you know last name first name etc and you have to give it the right data type generally um, you know, it could be short text or long text I'm not really picky about that space isn't an issue that much anymore especially in smaller applications but uh, you can make it some form of text um, some kind of text uh, short text will probably do the job given the length of names but uh, I'm gonna so let's make it short text okay so we have that table created, we shut it down. Do we want to save the changes? Yes. Okay, then we're going to do, we're going to go create, and we're going to create another table, and that's going to be, and right click on that, go to design view, and that is going to be the, uh, the books table. And I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to go book ID, that's an auto number, and then all of the different columns that are non-key, not foreign keys, but the ones given in the lab, you have to put all those in and then you have to select what the appropriate data type would be based on what type of information it stores. So, I mean, if you're doing an order table and there's an order date, well, obviously it would be a date time type. If it's a price, you can use currency if you want. Um, you could use, if it was a price, you could use number and then pick the what's called a single, which is a decimal value. That would work. So um, these are the ones that you'll use. A yes, no, if it was, a, say, it's a preferred, if preferred was the name of the column, you could make it a yes, no, because a person is a preferred customer or not. Not that that's in the lab, but that's how you use these different data types. So you need to use judgment as to which ones of these you, that you use. So um, I've created my book table now. I'm going to shut that down, yes. And then in the lab, they also ask you to create a, um, another table and that one would be the uh, um, author table and that also needs an ID except its default of auto number then you will also want to create another table which will be the publisher table so I get a new one here right click design view publisher and I will make this publisher ID. That is an auto number field. And then uh, I also have an author table. Click on that. Oh, already had an author. Okay. So books, author, customers. Okay, I know what it was. It was a need to create this one we need to uh, make this an order table and that will be order ID I'm 
shut that down. Okay, so you've got all these. Um, you're also going to need, if you see, uh, there's three videos I've produced. Um, you might have seen them. Uh, the one was on how to relate these in one to many, many to one, many, one to many relationships. You're going to need some junction tables as well. For example, author and books you need to join up as well. And uh, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to go create. And I'm going to go uh, author. I'm going to right click on this and call this author book because author and book is joined in the many to many relationships, so it needs a junction table. Now, this is a little bit different how you do your primary key. The author book is a junction table, so it gets its author ID and it also gets its book ID from the primary keys in the author and book tables. So you can't auto number them, but you do have to make them a number of the long integer type. This is very, very important. If you miss this step, when you go to join up your, your tables, then it's going to give you an error saying that your data types don't match. Or it's impossible for me to auto number, it's impossible for me to auto number, you know, these books and author tables, uh, IDs, when they're pointing to values that are already numbered in the author and books table. So you got to make sure you set these to number. Remember, junction tables have number columns, not auto number columns, and their underlying data type, type is long integer. Okay, the other thing you need to do in author book is to make this a concatenated key. So I click on author ID. You can't see it, but now I'm holding the shift key and I click on book ID as well. And then I click on the primary key and now this has been made a concatenated key. And through our relationship joining in a minute, we will join up these authors and book tables to the individual author and book tables. Okay. So I go, do you want to save it? Yes, I do. Okay, so now what I do is um, we're going to build more of these as we go, but I just want to get started and show you this. So we'll go to the relationships window, and I'm going to put all of these, all of these tables into my design area. And I need to join some of these up. I need to join up author and books right here. See that? Okay, so what you do is you grab the one column, book ID, and set it on the other column. Up pops up this edit relationships window and you click on enforce referential integrity. What this says is that you can't delete any book that is being pointed to by the author book table. And that's what it means to enforce referential integrity. You don't want to orphan any of these IDs you might have put in here at one point by deleting the book that they're pointing to. And that this will enforce that. So um, then you click on create and see how it put the relationship line in here. This means one and this is an infinity sign which means many. And if you have a line here but it doesn't have the one and it doesn't have the many on it then it means you haven't done it right. It means you've forgotten. You need to click on the relationship, click edit relationship and then click on enforce referential integrity. Okay and we do the same thing over here. Click on enforce referential integrity, create. Okay, so now we've handled the author book relationship that uh, is in the instructions. The next one I'm going to do um, order book. Order book is another many to many relationship. Each order can have many books on it, and each book can appear on many different orders. So uh, I'm going to have to create a table, and I don't know if I can do it here. So I'm going to shut down this window. It's really a good idea. Save this, yes to shut down any objects you're not using even though you will go back to them. So I'm going to create a book order table right now. So I go click here and go this and um, table and I go design view a book or order book I'm going to call it. Okay and then like this is a junction table right? So it needs book ID and it needs order ID but as I said, this entity gets its primary key from the other tables, so it can't auto number, or else it's confusing the database. You just set these to numbers. Very, very important. Select both of these. I cl clicked to the first ID, held down my shift key, selected the second ID, primary key, primary key, and then with those two selected, 
click primary key and then that gives me the concatenated key for the order book table and I save those changes okay so now I can go back into database tools and relationships and I can right click and I can add in order book right here which I just created and then I can use that is to junction or join up books and orders so I am gonna go like that and I'm going to do the same thing we did earlier. Book ID goes on top of book ID. Enforce referential integrity. Create. Um, and then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to grab order ID, put it on top of order ID, and I'm going to enforce referential integrity, and I'm going to go create. Okay? So uh, now we've got that many, many relationship. Now, um, customers also associate with orders, correct? so we need to associate these two and the rule that I gave you is that the foreign key goes on the many side of the relationship each customer associates with many orders but each order has only one customer the many side is here so I have to put customer ID in this table just like we would have done in the Visio diagram earlier on and I can get to my design view to add that customer ID by just right clicking on order going to table design and typing in customer ID and make that a number column okay and uh, then I shut that down and it's added it so now what I have to do is grab that customer ID and set it on top of that customer ID enforce referential integrity click on create and then it's also created that relationship so when I go into an order, I know which customer it is because it points to it. And each order can only have one customer. And then the last one is the publisher book relationship. On that one, each publisher has many books, but each book is associates with only one publisher. So what that means that I have to do is I have to put a publisher ID in the books table because that's the many side of the relationship. Each publisher has many books. I do the same thing I did with order. I right click, I go to table design, and I'm going to add in here publisher ID. And of course, because it's a foreign key, it's got to be a number. All foreign keys are always numbers, remember that. They're not auto numbers, they're numbers. And I shut that down. And now I've got these able to relate and I just drag them on top of each other publisher goes on top of publisher I enforce referential integrity and create and now this one that works as well each publisher has many books but each book associates with only one publisher now what you have to do is you have to go back into every one of these tables here and you can get to the, you can get to them by you know going right click and going to table design for example and when you're done shutting them down and saving them or you can sh close out this window entirely, save the relationships, and then you can go into them individually into design view like this, and then enter in what their non-key columns are as specified in the instructions. And with that, uh, you should be done. Now, I do want to show you one error that you might get. Um, I'm going to delete this relationship right here. Okay. And I'm going to just assume that I've made this publish go into this. I'm going to make this wrong so you can see the error in case it happens to you. Let's make this text or short text. Do you want to save the changes? Yes. Okay. So that's wrong. It shouldn't be short text, but I made it in error. And then I click on this and I go to enforce referential integrity. Look what I get relationship must be on the same number of fields and with the same data types so because I made publisher ID an auto numbered field which means it's a number with an underlying long integer data type and I made the and you can't see it here but I made the publisher ID in the book table a text field it can't join them up they have to be the same type of data so um, say okay go like that shut it down and then I have to go back and fix this. I have to right click, go to table design, change this so that it's the correct data type capable of being joined. Say yes. And then I grab publisher ID, I put it on top of publisher ID, I click enforce referential integrity, and then I create. 
and now I've got this whole database designed properly. Make sure you add in all your non-key columns, give them the appropriate data type, some require judgment and I can be flexible. I don't not fixate it on any one way unless it's clearly, you know, you make a uh, something that is clearly a date, a number column for example, or a yes no column when it's a date. I mean that's clearly wrong, but um, you go through and give it data types that are appropriate and then you've completed this access portion of the lab and I'm gonna sh shut it down right here save it to relationships and, uh, if you want to put it somewhere you know file save as if you're not using Citrix this is on my home machine save as I can you know navigate to somewhere that I want to put it like my desktop I'll call it lab 3 access portion yes 245 the appropriate name do use the appropriate name I think they told you to use your last name so the award right however it says to do it in the labs um, um, it, that's very important because I download them all and then I need to be able to see your name as to who I'm grading so um, make sure you have your name and how you save it for sure the way they tell you to do it in the actual lab save it like that okay now I'm done and I could find that on my desktop and upload it to the appropriate uh, lab 3 in the module section and uh, that's how you do it that's how you do the access